I love you. I love you more. Hey guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society, and today we're gonna make these hearts on a stick. I'm gonna put the written pattern in the description box below, along with a few video suggestions if you're a beginner crocheter. If you love to put a face on everything like I do, ooh, here you go. We're not gonna put the face and the smile on in the video, but I will put in the description box below where you'd wanna place those if you decided to put a cute little face on your heart. To get started, you wanna grab some supplies. Here I have a worsted weight yarn in Shine Worsted by Knit Picks and We Crochet. It's really pretty and has a really pretty sheen to it. You'll also wanna grab some lollipop sticks. These are a four inch stick, and I think these work great with worsted weight yarn and sport weight yarn. And then if you're looking to make a bigger heart with a thicker yarn, I would suggest grabbing a six inch lollipop stick. You can find these at Michael's, Joann's, Amazon, really anywhere. Grab an E, three and a half millimeter crochet hook, scissors, yarn needle, stitch markers, some polyfill stuffing, and then if you are gonna put a smile and the eyes on, just grab a needle with some thread and six inch, six millimeter safety eyes. Six inch would be crazy. Um, you also want to grab some fabric glue. I like Aileen's glue. We'll wanna add a little dab of that to the end of the lollipop stick to help keep it in place. We're gonna get started by grabbing our hook yarn and stitch marker. We're gonna make five single crochet into a magic circle and you can watch my easy magic circle here or you can just do your favorite way of making a magic circle. So here I'm gonna leave a tail. I'm gonna start out by making a slip knot by wrapping the yarn around two fingers and I'm gonna hold the tail with my ring finger. I'm gonna push the back piece to the front and I'm gonna pull up on that back piece of yarn making a slip knot. You can use your tail as needed to adjust your slip knot. From here, you can place your middle finger into that loop, pull on the tail a bit, and then use your ring finger to hold the tail in place. Insert your hook into the loop. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through again to attach to your magic circle. Now we're gonna make a single crochet. Insert your hook into the circle. You're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. Insert your hook again. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. So we're gonna make our third single crochet here. And then we're gonna make our fourth and our last single crochet into the magic circle. From here, I'm gonna place a stitch marker on the last stitch of the round. And then I'm gonna pull my tail out and tighten the middle of my magic circle. And then we're gonna count our stitches. So here we have one V, two, three, four, and five. There's this little bump here and that's just the chain stitch that we made to attach to our magic circle. So moving on to round two, we are going to make an increase in each stitch around. So that means two single crochet in each stitch. So get your hook underneath that first stitch. Sometimes it can be a little difficult. And then you're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook to make your single crochet. And then add one more single crochet into that same stitch. It's your first increase. Add two single crochet into the next stitch. This is one and two. And then we're gonna make a single crochet into that third stitch, a second single crochet. And then we'll do the same thing here, two single crochet in the same stitch. And then in our last stitch with the stitch marker, add two single crochet. Change the stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And then I'm just gonna pull this tight once again because this magic circle is gonna keep opening up. For round three and four, we're gonna single crochet in the next 10 stitches. So you wanna count to make sure that you have 10 stitches and then single crochet all the way around. Last week I did a crochet along for my mini monster and she's a great 
little project for Valentine's Day. She's actually pretty quick to work up and this heart would actually be super perfect for her. So I'm going to show her at the end of the video holding the heart and you can see what you think about possibly doing her as a fun Valentine's Day gift for somebody. Okay, we're reaching our last single crochet, the stitch with the stitch marker. And from here, we want to change our stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And then for round four, we're going to single crochet once again. If you need to, close your magic circle and then continue on single crocheting all the way around. Here you may notice that my work is turning in on, my, on me, so I'm just making sure that I turn it out once in a while so that the stitches are facing the right way. Okay, we're reaching the last stitch of round four. From here, we're gonna count our rounds. We have round one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker and then we're gonna fasten off. So I'm gonna leave a bit of a tail. And then to fasten off, we're just gonna yarn over and pull the yarn all the way through. I like to tighten it at the end. So this is our side one. We're gonna put this to the side and make side two. We're gonna get started on side two. I'm just gonna do my magic circle here. So I'm gonna make five single crochet into a magic circle. I actually have three videos you can watch. Um, magic circles are a pretty particular thing and some of them I just can't figure out. So there are three ways that I actually like and one of them doesn't even need a magic circle. It's how to start a magic circle with chain stitches. So I'm going to link all those below just in case you're struggling with how you want to make your magic circle. Here I'm going to tighten things up and I'm going to place my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round. For round two we're going to increase in each stitch around. So this is the same beginning as side one. So increase in each stitch. That first stitch can be so tricky. <laughs> we are going to increase one, increase two, increase three, increase four, and then increase for our last time. We're going to change our stitch marker to the last stitch of the round, tighten up our magic circle, and then for round three and four, we're going to do the same thing as we did on the first side. We're just going to single crochet in each stitch around for 10 stitches. So do that for round three and four. I will meet you back at the end of round four. Okay, I'm going into my last stitches of round four. Here's my last stitch with the stitch marker. I'm going to change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. So for round five, we're gonna single crochet in the next 20. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna grab the first side that we made and we are going to insert our hook into the stitch next to our fastened off. So if you pull up on your fastened off piece, you see that that stitch is taken. We wanna move over one to the left for our first open stitch. So here is our first open stitch. Keep your hook in that stitch and then get set up with your working yarn. This is going to feel really awkward, but we're going to make a single crochet in order to attach these. Yarn over, pull the yarn through. You'll have two loops on your hook, just like normal. Yarn over and pull through both loops. So this single crochet attaches these two sides together. Now we're going to continue crocheting around side one. And then once we reach the end of this side, we will connect to the other side. I also have a video on connecting feet where I go a bit slower and I'll also put that in the description box below because it's the same technique. 
Here is our last stitch. This is our fasten off and this is our V-stitch. So we're gonna go into that last V-stitch here. And then we need to insert our hook into side two. If you pull up on that piece of yarn that's attached, you can see here that that stitch is taken. Just pull up on that last stitch and you'll see which stitch is taken. You'll move over one stitch. Move one stitch over to the left, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, you have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. Now all you have to do is single crochet until you reach the stitch marker. Continue going all the way around. Okay, we're going into the stitch with our stitch marker. That's our last single crochet. So we're gonna change our stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And then I wanna show you here, you definitely wanna make sure you count your stitches, but the stitch next to your last stitch can sometimes feel hidden. This one I can see pretty well, but sometimes it gets stuck underneath that stitch. So stretch out your stitches and count to make sure that you have 20 stitches all the way around. I'm gonna do that super quick as well. If you don't have the stitches, don't worry, just pull it all out and just start over. Okay, you see here that there's a hole and we do not want that because the stuffing will come right out. So give yourself a lot of slack or put a stitch marker so your yarn doesn't unravel. And then grab that tail from side one and insert it into a yarn needle. We're gonna close up that hole. We're gonna go under two loops on one side of the heart, make sure you're going under both loops. And then I'm gonna grab two loops from the other side of the heart. So I'm going through four loops total. I'm gonna pull that through really tight and I'm gonna go underneath the same stitch once again. When I pull through this time, I'm gonna go a bit slower because I wanna leave a loop at the end because I wanna make a knot. I'm gonna insert my hook or insert my needle behind the loop and pull that really tight. That makes a knot on the inside of the heart and so that piece of yarn will stay in place. So here you can see that the hole is stitched together. There's one tiny stitch and you can hide your tail inside of the heart. Here I just want to show you something. We can talk about tension for a minute. This left side is looks a tad bigger than the right and it could be because the way we're attaching but I also think I tend to go a little looser on my second time around. So don't worry if one side is a little bit bigger. We just can stuff the other side a little bit more. It happens to all of us. Moving on to round six, we're going to make one decrease and then single crochet in the next eight stitches. And we're going to do that two times around. We are going to go into this first stitch here and I'm going to use an invisible decrease. If you don't know how to do an invisible decrease, I will put a link to my other video up here in the corner. To make an invisible decrease, you want to put your hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch and then directly underneath the loop of the second stitch. You're gonna yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through again. We're gonna single crochet in the next eight stitches. So this is single crochet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're gonna make another invisible decrease here by going under both of the front loops, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over and pulling through. We're gonna make the next eight single crochet. So just finish off this round with single crochet stitches. And then ending here 
we will change our stitch marker and move on to round seven. Round seven, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next four stitches, and we're gonna do this three times around. Here, we're making our first decrease, and then single crochet in the next four stitches. This will be our second decrease here. Single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is our last decrease. And then we're gonna end this round with four single crochet. change your stitch marker, and then we will continue to round eight, which is making one decrease, single crocheting in the next three stitches, and we'll do this three times around. So here is our first decrease, single crochet in the next three stitches, our second decrease, single crochet in the next three and then our last decrease and single crochet in the last three stitches We're gonna change our stitch marker and then we are going to switch gears for a minute because we're gonna stuff our heart. Give yourself some slack on your working yarn and place a stitch marker in that piece so it doesn't unravel as you're stuffing. Okay, so we're gonna stuff the heart, but I just wanted to mention that if you did wanna place your six millimeter safety eyes, you could do it now. Place them between round six and seven and I liked to leave two stitches in between the eyes. I would suggest that if you are placing a smile to embroider it after the heart is stuffed and finished. Okay, from here, grab your polyfill stuffing. I'm just gonna add small bits to each side. I'm gonna add a little bit extra to the right without leaving holes. If it starts to look stretched out, I'm not gonna continue to stuff it. I did have that left side looking just a tad bit bigger, so Let's see what I can do. I don't want to overstuff at this point because I need to crochet a little bit more and I don't want to make holes in my work. Moving on to round nine, we're going to decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. So here is our decrease and then make a single crochet. We're going to make our second decrease, single crochet, and then continue making a decrease and then a single crochet until the end. Okay, we're making our last single crochet and from here, I'm gonna change my stitch marker and grab a little bit more stuffing. This is kind of like the last chance that I have to stuff. So I'm gonna use the back of my crochet hook. I'm gonna add a little bit of stuffing. You can also use a pair of scissors, that's also helpful. Or in the polyfill bags, they usually include a long wooden stick. So if you have that, you can always use that as well. Sorry about the earthquake. <laughs> it's like the Jurassic Park rumble. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep on stuffing until I like the way it looks. We are going to move on to round 10 and that's just four decreases. So we're gonna decrease all the way around so that we end up with four stitches. Here is decrease one. Decrease two.
decrease three, and our last decrease here. Okay, from here I wanna fasten off, so I'm gonna leave a long piece of yarn. I'm gonna yarn over and pull that tail all the way through. I like to cinch the end, and then I'm gonna take out my stitch marker here. Grab your lollipop stick, and before you place any glue on it, I like to insert it into the heart just to kind of make a tunnel in between my stuffing. And if that gets a little difficult, grab your blunt yarn needle and you can kind of make like a little hole for your lollipop stick. So here we go, I have a, a pretty good handle on things. And then you wanna put a little bit of glue onto the end. I could not get my glue out, so I dipped it in and then carefully insert it back in to where you made that little stuffing hole. After you feel like your lollipop stick is in place, go ahead and grab your yarn needle and weave it into your tail. With that tail, you'll wanna wrap around once, and then I wrap around twice, pulling really tight as I'm wrapping. And then all I do is make a simple knot in the back. So I find a piece of yarn to go under, like a little stitch with my yarn needle. I'm indecisive here. Okay, I'm getting it underneath that stitch and I'm pulling through slowly because I wanna leave a loop at the end here. I'm gonna go behind my loop. I'm gonna make my loop kind of small because I want my knot to be against this. And then very slowly, I'm gonna hold onto that tail and just try to shimmy my knot as close to the lollipop stick as I can or to the yarn as I can. If you have a better way of making a knot, I'm not an embroiderer, so I'm not great at knot making, but um, this has seemed to work for me. And then I'm gonna weave in my needle close to where that knot is. And once you weave that in, it'll pull the knot into the stitch and it basically disappears. So I'm just gonna weave my yarn in a bit more. And then I'm gonna just snip off that extra piece. I would give your lollipop stick a few hours to dry. Between the glue and the knot, the lollipop stick does stay in place really well. Well, I have made quite a few of these. I would not give this to a small child just in case the lollipop stick did come out. I wouldn't give that to anyone under the age of three. Here's our hearts. You can make it smiley or keep it plain. They both look great. And then here is our mini monster. She was my crochet along last week, so if you wanna crochet her, here's a link in the upper right corner. And she also looks pretty cool with her heart stick. Thank you guys for hanging out during this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for new tutorials and crochet alongs in the near future.